Never let the fire in your heart go out. Don't do that. Keep it alive. Don't be careless. Don't let that fire go out. Serve the Lord with all of your heart. When you hope, be joyful. When you suffer, be patient. When you pray, be faithful. Share with God's people who are in need. Take a responsibility to share with those that are in need. Welcome others into your homes. Beloved, are you feeling dry and uninterested in spiritual things? Are you struggling to connect with the Lord? Maybe struggling to even want to? If so, don't lose hope. You can get your spiritual fire back. Say, I can get it back. Amen. And burn brightly for the Lord once again. Hallelujah. I will share with you seven ways that you can regain your spiritual fire. Amen. Dryness happens. Apathy happens. However, those things are not the will of God. Amen. For your life. In Revelations 2, 1 to 7, Jesus tells us how he feels about it when we abandon him. When we abandon our first love and let ourselves get dry spiritually. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say, He who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not, and have found them to be liars. You have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. A great commendation coming from Jesus himself for the church at Ephesus. This was an incredible church that the Apostle Paul founded. Did you know that in that incredible metropolis, that was a church with over 20,000 members at the time. Young Timothy was appointed as the pastor of that church. But then Jesus follows up and says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. Unless you repent. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God says to the church. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And that's in Revelations 2, 1 to 7. You know, God really hates spiritual apathy, guys. Amen? And let's face it, it's not fun to be around somebody that's spiritual apathetic. Amen? It's not fun to be around yourself. Amen? It's not fun to be around yourself when we're apathetic. So when we find ourselves in that condition, we have to stir ourselves up. Everybody right now, I'm going to challenge you to do something. You probably will feel uncomfortable doing this. But lay your, just lay hands on yourself right now. On your head, on your chest, whatever, okay? Lay hands. Start speaking the Word of God over yourself and do what God prescribes in His Word to regain our spiritual fire. Amen. If you feel dry and a little dim today, I want to encourage you. I am sharing seven ways today to regain your spiritual fire. And you can do it. Amen. And you can do all of them. And they're not hard. Amen. This is something... God is giving us right out of the Word of God. This is easy. In fact, as you carry out one of these, this is really important. One of the keys, you will find yourself slipping into a groove of being you, the you that you once were. Amen. And it's going to feel good. Say, it's going to feel good. Amen. These keys describe a lifestyle. A lifestyle. Not something you hear on a Sunday morning and, oh, we feel good about it. We had a great service in the outside. The weather was perfect. The coffee was great. And everybody brought different things and we enjoyed good fellowship. Yes, we did. And that's all good. But I'll tell you right now, we're talking about a change of lifestyle. We're talking about changing the way we think. Amen. 
These seven methods and techniques I just I will describe to you in just a moment will incorporate you will incorporate them in your daily life and they will instantly transform who you are and what you do on a daily basis. The transformation will start from the heart. Everybody say from the heart. Somebody just put their hand over their heart right now. Say it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. Seep into my body, soul, and spirit. And then will manifest in your outward circumstances as well. So without further ado, let's look into what the Lord is saying here this morning. And if any of my notes go flying away, those of you that are close by, will you pick them up for me? Thank you. <laughs> I, got this new, I got this new stand here with this special holder here, and it's really been a big help here in the, in the breezy place, okay? Number one, everybody ready? Number one, we got to make sure that we're seeking God first. Everything we do. Matthew 6.33, this is a really important passage. Okay, you ready? But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added to you. It is clearly the will of God that we seek Him first in everything you do. He wants to be the most important thing in your life. Amen. What is the most important thing in your life? Is it your car? Is it your house? Is it your clothing? Is it food? Is it, I mean, there's a lot of things can slip in, guys. Amen? Come on. Somebody said, Pastor, you're making me be honest, and I am. Amen? Because that can slip in with any of us. Amen? He wants to be the most important thing in your life. Amen. Not the least or not even the second. I put it in your bulletin. God just don't play second fiddle, guys. Amen. God just doesn't play second fiddle. Amen. It's really important. He wants our time with Him to be the most important thing that we do every day. He wants to be first before anything else. Yes, before Facebook. Yes, before checking your emails. Yes, before you start eating and all the other things that are part of your normal routine. He wants to be first. But, er, but beyond that, He deserves to be first. Amen. Amen. This is really important. Whatever you do, whatever you do first is the most important thing to you. So you can tell where your priorities are. By what you do first every day. I got so convicted of this, the Lord showed Carol and I this a number of things a number of years ago. And uh, the Lord was teaching me about the Sabbath and the importance of, you know, rejuvenation of our mind and body and soul one day in seven. I was a workaholic. I mean, I, I used to work so hard. We were raising our seven children, holding a big job down. I'd work on Saturdays. I'd even go in on Sunday mornings at 6 o'clock in the morning and work till about 10, then go pick up Carol and the kids and go to church. I didn't know how to stop working. And somebody said, well, that's good work ethic, Pastor. Well, good work ethic is a good thing. I agree with that. But you don't go to extremes. Amen. Amen? Come on, guys. The Lord is speaking to us here this morning because He wants this fire that we've been talking about. We just got done singing, Lord, fill me up. We want a fresh new baptism in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, I got so convicted when the Lord showed me this, I asked Him for help. I began to seek Him truly first. The very first thing Carol and I do now, we come downstairs and we say, we've got to spend private time with God. We don't start anything unless we do that. She has her little woman cave. I have my man cave that I go to. It's just two different rooms. That's all that is. You know. But I go into the family room. That's, my, that's where I meet with God. That's where I meet with God. I hear Him. I talk to Him. He sings to me. I sing to Him. It's beautiful. Carol goes in our living room, the other end of the house. We have a pretty good-sized house, so we could be at 
It, she's in the living room. I'm in the family room. We're pretty far away from each other. And, but that's so beautiful. That moment is so important to us. And we will not start, we will not do one thing, nothing, until we have that private time with God. Somebody said amen. 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 Somebody said amen. amen. Somebody said that sounds like a good idea, Pastor. Yes. Somebody said that. Oh, good, good. I thought I heard that. Amen. Amen. Now this is really, you know, that one little change will make a huge difference in your life. Amen. Holy Spirit is really sensitive. Do you know that? The Holy Spirit is not just some wind force. It's a person. It's a person. Everybody say it with me. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. Amen. I can still feel a major difference in my morning time with the Lord if I get rid of the phone, get rid of the Facebook, never turn on the television. That'll destroy your soul so fast. Oh, i got to watch the news in the morning. No, you don't. I'm simply saying, don't soil your spirit early in the day. Amen. Say it's easy to get caught up in that trap of waking up, catching up on Facebook notifications and emails and messages, text messages, and and then seek God. After you have everything else out of the way, then, oh yeah, well now I can spend some time with God. The Lord gave me a vision a few weeks ago. And actually it was something I had seen years ago in my spirit. I was standing in line. And, and there was just a lot of things going on. It was kind of busy, a little bit on the noisy side. And, and the line was a long line. And in the back of the line, I saw Jesus standing there. And he was waving his arms like this, trying to get my attention. In other words, all these things were ahead of him. And that's what was getting my attention. There were other things that were more important than him at that point. And he was doing like this. He was like waving his hand, hey, I'm back here. Don't forget me. Come on, I'm back. And he was way in the back of the line. That was a vision that the Lord gave me because I was just a busy, busy person. And I think you understand that. Raising a large family, holding a big job down, all the things that we do, absolutely understandable. But God showed me this. The Lord showed me this. Don't soil your spirit early in the day. Amen. You turn news on in the morning, it will soil your spirit. I had a pastor friend tell me that one time. When you get ready to start a church service, and this was always good advice, and I never forgot it. He said, don't let anybody soil your spirit before you preach the Word. Amen. Don't do that. And I taught, I know Bob Rocco was my senior deacon at the time, and I I had a meeting with him. I said, Bob, this is what God is showing me, and I need your help as a deacon. I need you to keep people away from me. If I'm going off, sometimes at the hotel, I'll go in the back room and pray. You'll see me disappear behind the door. That's what I'm doing. I'm praying. Even here, before we started today, I went over in the gazebo and I was spending time with God. And Bob used to keep people away from me. He said, leave the pastor alone. He's, he needs some time with God. And Bob used to watch that. He would guard me. And I appreciated that. That was good advice, wasn't it, from that pastor? Don't let anybody soil your spirit before you preach the Word. Don't do that. And there's a lot of things that can soil your spirit. A lot of things going on. A lot of things happening. There's always something. Like today, the wind starts blowing, trash. Um, there's always, this is just a practical thing we address, but I'm just simply saying, there's always something to distract you. Amen? And I don't care whether you're at home, I don't care where you are. Amen? It's so easy to get caught up in the trap of waking up, catching up on things that we think are important, and then letting God wait. Amen? I feel that the Holy Spirit gets hurt. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. I believe. I believe that there. It says in the Word of God, "Do not grieve the Holy Spirit." I believe we can hurt the Holy Spirit. Yes. 
And sometimes I feel that. Have you? I hope that you can say yes to that because we all have made these mistakes. I know that I have grieved them and there is far less fire in my morning quiet time. Sometimes it's just plain dry when I'm not doing the things that I should be doing. However, to get out of bed, go into my man cave where I study and pray and immediately sit down with Father God, ignoring the phone and all those things. I'll tell you, these wonderful devices that we have, but they can be a huge distraction. Wow, I tell you, there's a huge difference in how you will start your day. Somebody said amen. Amen. I feel when I'm with God during that quiet time that Carol and I do every morning is that I feel I can, I can feel God next to me in a tangible way. It's almost like I can feel His presence. I can feel His shoulder touching mine. I can hear the voice of God. There's something happening in that room. And then He starts talking to me. Did you listen to what the Holy Spirit was saying to you? Or are you too busy? Is the TV running in the background? Are you looking at something on your phone? What's going on? Amen? Amen. I'm simply saying, I can touch Him and I can feel Him. I can hear Him clearly. I get so much more out of my time in the Word when I'm having this quiet time with Him. Creative ideas come fast and furious. Amen? Everything changes. I start to think more clearly. Everything changes. Amen? Amen? The other day I sat down, I said to Carol, I said, I had the most incredible time with God this morning. It was like an amazing time. It really does make an amazing difference when you put God first. Amen. I challenge you today to look at your daily routine. What do you put before the Lord in your daily routine? Anything that you put before Him is an idol to you. Say it's an idol. Oh, pastor, I would never commit idolatry. Yes, we do. Anything that you put before Him is an idol to you. Amen. If you wake up and do all the things or even anything before you seek God, then God is not first. Something else is more important. I'm not talking about emergencies. I'm not talking about you wake up and one of the kids are sick and somebody you know, is sick. and you got. I'm not talking about emergencies. We all have those things to deal with. I'm talking about a daily routine where you tend to put things ahead of God. Amen. That's what I'm talking. Everybody with me on that now? Amen. Don't think the pastor's going crazy here. I'm not going crazy. This is good advice. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's clearly not God's will for us to have idols. And, we will, and He will bless us when we dethrone and cast idols out of our lives. If you want to regain your spiritual fire, number one is to make sure that you're putting God first in your life. Number two, ask the Lord to help you to be on fire for Him. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Say, I can't do anything without him. I can't do anything, I can't do anything without Jesus. Say nothing, nothing. I cannot do one thing without the help of the Holy Spirit. That includes living on fire for God. Therefore, if you want to regain your spiritual fire, you need to ask the Lord to help you. You can't do it on your own. Amen. This step can be really simple. It's easy to have a heartfelt prayer. One little sentence breathed out to the Lord. Father God, Lord Jesus, just help me to burn for you today. Amen. Help me to burn for you today. Set me on fire. Remember that you didn't give your life to Jesus by yourself. Amen. This is important. In John 6.44, Jesus said, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. So you didn't even come to Christ on your own. What did, he, what did the pastor just say? You didn't even come to Christ on your own. He had to draw you. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up in that last day. Everything we do, absolutely everything requires God's help. Amen. We cannot do anything at all without Him. So why in the world would we try to drum up a fiery lifestyle without Him? We can't and we will never do it by ourselves. Somebody said Amen. Amen. Of course, if you should do whatever you can, the Lord wants us to do what we can do. I believe the Holy Spirit doesn't want us to be stupid and just say there, Lord, just do everything for me. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making sure that you acknowledge God in all your ways. Amen?
Father God, Lord Jesus, help me to burn for You today. Set me on fire, O God. Light the fire again. Amen. What a simple prayer. Everybody say that right now. Say, Lord, light the fire again in my heart. Are you willing to pray that right now? Do you realize the responsibility associated with that prayer? If you sit there right now and you say, Lord, light the fire again. Do you realize the responsibility associated with what you just prayed? Because He's going to pour out your, His Spirit on you. That's what He's going to do. He's going to get the gifts of the Spirit stirred up within you. That's what's going to happen. Then you're going to have a responsibility to be, to be a responsible person. Amen. Number three. You ready for number three? Make sure that you attend church. Do you realize the importance of being together? If you're not worshiping and seeking God with fiery people, you are not likely to be on fire yourself. Amen. Amen. Do you realize how many people that we, we were just asking every week? Yesterday, I invited 22 men to our men's meeting. 22 men. It's hard to stir up the men. I'm telling you, it's really been a job. One time, didn't we yet have 18, 20 men who would come out to a men's meeting? And that was early. That's when we came to my house at 8 o'clock. They would descend upon our house. It was probably Carol's cooking. But anyway, it was, it was really good. <laughs> yeah, and Carol's cooking helps at 8 o'clock in the morning. And those big fresh fruit salads and all that stuff, you know? <laughs> all right, let me say this, guys. We get together on a Sunday morning. Why? Because fire is contagious. It's catching. Say it's catching. If you're not worshiping and seeking God with other fiery people, you are not likely to be on fire yourself. Oh, oh I can do it myself at home. No, you can't. If you, if you can't go out, that's one thing. No, I'm, I'm just saying, if you're sick, unable, situate, I'm not talking about that. Every one of us have those emergencies, emergencies we have to deal with. I'm just simply saying, you can't do this by yourself. You're not made to do it by yourself. We are made for community. We really do need each other. Amen? I had a message a few weeks ago. Go back on YouTube. Go out, go out to the YouTube um, channel, House of Praise YouTube channel, and you'll see it. We really do need each other. Listen to that message again. When I worship in person with other believers at my local church, my spiritual fires get stoked. And I don't remember ever not feeling that way. I remember as a little kid, I couldn't wait to get into church. I loved to sing the old hymns. That's all we sang back in those days. But I loved them. I enjoyed the fun. I enjoyed the fellowship afterwards with my friends. Community. We're made for community. We're made for that. Amen. Amen. My attitude toward God becomes callous if we're not careful. My attitude toward church can become callous. Ah, take it or leave it. I start feeling like, eh, this is fine. If I have my one-on-one time for God with God, that's all I really need. Yes, you do need that, but you also need community. Amen? My spiritual fire dims and sputters. Amen? But then that first Sunday back in church... With other believers in person. Wow, what a difference. Amen? What a difference. I just always love to get together. I, I live for getting together on a Sunday morning. I can't wait to get here. And I know we're not a big church, but that doesn't matter to me. I mean, yeah, if we had 500 to 5,000, that'd be great. That's a different dynamic. But with, even with a small family church, it's a beautiful thing to get together. Why in the world would we ever choose not to do that? When I'm actually physically together with you guys, I feel myself filling up. I feel tears coming down my cheeks many times. Not all the time, but many times. You'll see me up there just crying because I feel the presence of God because of what you bring to the church. It's what you bring. I'm enveloped in glory. I get fired up in my spirit. I get resensitized to the things of God. Amen. And I remember why church attendance is so necessary. The Apostle Paul said in Hebrews 10.25, 
Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Amen. And so much more as the day of Christ approaches. Amen? Amen. And even after the church is a... I know we had a lot of closing downs last year. It was awful, wasn't it? Shut down. And we did the best we can to stay online with everybody. Using our YouTube channel and, and trying to communicate... I mean, text messages, thank God for these technologies. It helped us through that time, didn't it? But boy, I'll tell you, even after the church is reopened, still many wouldn't come back. Even today. Beloved, if this is you, please, please, whoever's listening to this video right now, and I, I just know that hundreds of people will hear this message, maybe thousands. We've had as many as 6,000 views to our, to our YouTubes. That's on Facebook. That's the biggest exposure. And I just know that I, I, just, I just feel so certain that you will find a huge difference if you choose to do that. Amen? Choose to do that. But even after the churches have reopened, many have not come back. Beloved, if this is you, please, I implore you, go back to church. Get your family back in church. Get your family back in church. Don't give your children an option saying, well, it's okay if you don't go. Well, it's not okay. It's not okay. Do something, anything. I mean, we try to make our church fun as well. We enjoy these little feasts that we have and, and things that we have. We always have refreshments for you. All those kind of things. Anything that would make it easier. But the main thing is, is the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So I'm just giving this, whoever's listening to this video right now, go back to church. Amen? Amen. Number four, fast. The lifestyle of fire is a lifestyle of fasting. Now don't take this that Pastor Steve's saying I'm going to have to starve myself and all of that. No, believe me, that's not what I'm talking about. If you look in Scripture, you'll see fasting is... Uh, it's very simple. Fasting is simply a self-discipline and denial of the flesh to give God that time. That's all it is. And you don't get God's attention by fasting. He gets your attention better by fasting. Amen? You're not going to force the hand of God because you gave up breakfast this morning. You hear what I'm saying? That's not going to work that way. But as we fast, what is it again? Fasting food is simply a self-discipline and a denial of the flesh to give God that time. Amen? Amen? Fasting is a voluntary offering to the Lord. True fasting is when you get your heart right before the Lord by offering Him something meaningful in order to spend more time with Him. This is so important. Abba, Father... Will you take this while I just sit here and stare at you for a while? I just want to spend time in your presence. Can we talk, Lord? Can we laugh together? Can we dance together? Do you talk to God that way? I do all the time. I love to laugh with God. I think God has a great sense of humor. Amen. I really do. I think Jesus has a smile on his face. Amen? Come on, somebody. Come on, guys, live it up here. Come on, amen. And you can talk and laugh and dance together. I want you more than I want anything else. Amen. amen. <laughs> Fasting, don't, don't get all hung up on that because believe me, I, and especially when there's health issues involved, I understand those things. A lot of times there's very, very important health issues you've got to be considered. And believe me, this pastor is not telling you to do anything that would be unhealthy. Amen? Amen. Acknowledge the Lord. It's just a simple fleshly discipline. God honors the true fast every time. He will always meet you at the point of true sacrifice. Pastor Bill Johnson, do you know what he says? He said, fire always falls on sacrifice. Fire always falls on sacrifice. Amen. So do you want to regain some spiritual fire? Try fasting. Amen. When you do, God will always answer you. Somebody said amen. amen. Number five, surround yourself with worship and worship music. Music is one of the only things that you can truly do while doing everything else. I can do everything better when I hear worship playing in the background, man. I have worship music playing all the time. Everywhere, I, all the time. I go to sleep with it. I wake up with it. 
I just, I just work while I'm getting out a sermon. I can have worship music playing in the background. Somebody say, isn't that distracting? No, it feeds my soul. Amen. I get into the presence of God with worship music. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, listening to music engages a different part of your brain than most other activities. Amen. That is true. This means that you can worship, turn your heart toward the Lord in thanksgiving, praise, adoration, at the same time that you're doing other things. Amen. Anybody else ever experience that? Wow, only a couple hands. You guys, really, that, that is a beautiful thing. Keep worship music playing all the time. Amen. I encourage you to surround yourself with worship music at all times. I really do recommend that. That is a powerful thing. Every moment is a moment in which you can worship the Lord. So why would you ever want to miss out? Amen. If you want to regain your spiritual fire, worshiping the Lord is a key part. So don't miss that opportunity. Amen. For example, I mean, yeah, if you're exercising, put something upbeat on. Amen. If you just want to be quiet with the Lord, go with something quiet. It doesn't have to be. You have your own likes and desires and styles. That's okay. All music releases a sound and an anointing. Did you know that? That's why the devil tries to empower people with music that is inspired by the devil. Amen. Amen. You know that? That people listen to demon-inspired rap and music and it releases that anointing into your home. You realize that? This is powerful stuff, guys. This is powerful stuff. Unholy music will release an unholy anointing into your house. That's why we got to be careful. Be very careful. Amen. Worship music, whether you hear it or not, in other words, even if you're only in a different room and it's just in the background, releases a holy anointing into your home. Amen. Any, anybody here ever experienced this? I mean, this is so powerful, guys. If you're not experiencing this, you're missing a big thing here. Yes. Playing constant worship music in your house, listening to worship music as much as you can during the day will really stoke your spiritual fire. It will. It will make a huge difference. Here is a recommendation from your pastor. Become a worshiper. Amen. Become a worshiper. You realize worshipers have a huge impact on all those around them. Amen. Make your house a house of worship. That's why we named this church House of Praise. Amen. Thanksgiving is acknowledging what God has already done. That's a grateful heart. Praise is acknowledging who God is. So we acknowledge in that He is my Savior. He is my healer. He is my provision. That's praise. Amen. Regardless of what He has done. And then worship is acknowledging the presence of God. Amen. If you want to regain your spiritual fire, become a worshiper. Drive down the road worshiping. Amen. How many here love to have worship music in their car? Amen. Drive down the road worshiping. Make your house a house of worship. Release the sound of worship in your office. Everywhere you go, make sure that you have the worship of God being released. Amen. It's a heavy anointing. This is really important. Number, number six. We're almost through. You know what that means when a pastor says that? It means not a single thing. Right, yeah. yeah that's... Who's here hungry for the Word? Are you ready to get going? You ready for a little bit more of the Word or should I stop? Number six is pray constantly. These notes are in, not notes, but at least headings are in your bulletin so you can take them with you. And I'll be glad to send you all these notes if you desire them. I know Darlene asked me, she calls me the other day, Pastor, you're just so blessed with the Word of God. I need to have all the details of the teaching from Thursday night. Thursday night was a powerful teaching on enough is enough. I saw only 20 of you even watch that. I saw that. I, I can see who watches it. Very few people in the church are even like, this was a powerful teaching, guys, that will set you free. <laughs> I'm handing it to you. There's no charge, guys. Amen. So pray. Number six is pray constantly, whether in the Spirit or in your native language. You can pray either in the Spirit or in your native language. 
why you do pretty much anything. Amen. Praying in the Spirit simply means that you're praying using a prayer language. Some might say, well, I don't have a prayer language. Well, if that hasn't happened, is all you have to do is ask for it, guys. Is all you have to do is just ask for it. Remember, the Holy Spirit will never be denied anyone who asks for it. Are you ready for that? Pastor, I don't, I don't understand that. I've asked the Lord a lot of times and I don't get a prayer language. It's already within you. Just open up your mouth and let it flow. Amen. It's already within you. Amen. Praying in the Spirit is like speaking God's mysteries back to Him. Amen. When you're praying in the Spirit, it's not for anybody else to hear. It's between you and God. It edifies yourself. And it's a connection between you and God. Nobody else needs to hear anything you're saying. That's private. Say it's private. Amen. When you speak in tongues, you speak the mysteries of God back to Him. And this is a powerful way to pray. Amen. Also by engaging in constant prayer, either in tongues or in English, whatever your native language is, you turn your heart, your mind, your spirit, thoughts, and even body toward the Lord, coming in tune with Him like a satellite dish turning into a satellite signal. Amen. You ever see a satellite dish turning to catch the signal? That's what happens. Okay? Your soul and your mind and your, your, your very being has to be in tune with Holy God. Amen. And this is really important. Say prayer is important, guys. Amen. Yes. Praying together is good. Yes. Praying by yourself is good. Do whatever the Holy Spirit leads you. Don't be in bondage to anything or anybody. Don't do that. It's a personal thing between you and God. It's personal. Everything you can do can be accompanied by prayer. If you try it, you'll see. Amen. Speak in tongues or pray in the native language. Either one. They're both biblical. So don't get hung up on one or the other even. Don't do that. The Apostle Paul said, pray in the Spirit and pray with an understanding. Sing in the Spirit and sing with an understanding. Amen? Both are correct. Don't get hung up on that and say, well, if I'm not praying in tongues, it's not good enough. Don't, nowhere in Scripture does it say that. I believe praying in tongues will take you higher because the Holy Spirit is praying your prayer for you. So that will happen, absolutely. However, it's very important not to get hung up. Don't do that. The Apostle Paul warns us against those things. Number seven, we're almost done. Feed yourself with the Word of God. We're talking about how to stoke our spiritual fires once again. Feed yourself with the Word of God. Jesus is the Word made flesh. Now, this, this part is the most important thing I'm going to share with you right now. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. This is so important. John 6.33 says, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Amen. Also, one of the most important lessons that I have ever learned was that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word out of the mouth of God doth man live. Amen. Amen. I believe this, and I've said this to you before, I believe my next breath is being ordered by the Word of God. My next breath. Unless God orders my next breath, I won't have one. You understand that? My very life, my very being, every part of me, it only exists by the Word of God. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word out of the mouth of God doth man live. Amen. You have no life outside of the Word of God. No life. Say, in Christ there is life. Outside of Christ there is death. Amen. As it says in Deuteronomy 8.3, So He humbled you, allowed you to hunger and feed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that He might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that was from the pen of Moses. Spare yourself a load of heartache and grief and learn this the easy way. Amen? 
Say, the Word of God will feed you. The Word of God is literally Jesus in written form. Say, the Word of God is Jesus in written form, just as Jesus is word, God's Word in bodily form. Amen. Say, Jesus is the living Word. As such, the Word of God is your only bread, your only truth, your only source of life. What does that mean, Pastor? You mean to tell me I got to read chapter after chapter? I got to read a book a day? Do I got to read all this volume? Do I got to memorize all that? That's not what I say. You can get one word from God and it would be enough to sustain you for the day, for the week, for the month. Amen. This cannot be overstated. God's word is life. Say life. God's Word is life. Amen. And if you want to live on fire for God, whether you want to regain your spiritual fire and get fired up like you did at one time, you have to feed on the Word of God daily. No exceptions. No excuses. Period. You what the Lord showed me? The Word of God comes out in so many ways. When I sing worship songs, when we play worship songs, when we... Uh, I used to love to sit down at the keyboard, at the piano, and just the Word of God comes out of worship all the time. We're singing Scripture all the time. I can fellowship with you. I can go over to one of your homes or you can come over to my house and we can fellowship together. Just the fellowship will feed me the Word of God. Amen? Amen. So all i got to do is watch you and you're the, the, the Word of God being enacted out when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? So the Word comes into my spirit in so many different ways. It can come in through my thought life. Amen. It can come in through the Holy Spirit ministering to me. I don't have to sit with a book in my hand. I can go to my iPhone and have it read to me. Amen. That's a fantastic thing. Many times that will be a large part of my worship time. That I will just put my phone on and have scriptures. I'm reading whatever book that the Holy Spirit is leading me into, and I'll just let the whoever the reader is just read the Word of God to me. There's lots of different ways to get the Word in you guys. Amen. Amen. So many of you are suffering and are starved spiritually. Many here, God is telling me right now, is sitting under this pavilion that are starved spiritually because you are not. Feeding yourself the Word of God. This is probably the most important part of your spiritual walk. And for some of you, you're skipping it. It's not part of your life. (sighs) Beloved, if you are skipping God's Word, or even skimping on it, and eating, eating it only sparingly, you will be spiritually starved and eventually dead. Amen. You cannot. I'm not talking about caskets, flowers, rigor mortis. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm, when, when, when the Bible talks of death, it's talking about separation from God. Amen? Come on, guys, you know this. Darkness doesn't exist. It's the absence of light. Am I right? Darkness doesn't exist. It's the absence of light. The color black doesn't exist. It's the absence of color. Amen? Death doesn't exist. It's the absence of God. You understand what I'm saying? The absence of God is death. That's why I said to to Darlene, Al, our dear friend, Al passed away a couple months ago. He's more alive now than he ever was walking on this earth. Because he's closer to God. He's in the presence of Christ. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. He is in the presence of Christ right now, even as we speak. He's more alive now, Darlene, than He ever was here on earth. Because our bodies are limiting, very limiting. Our bodies and our flesh is limiting. When the flesh gets out of the way and we are in the presence of God, that's when you really come alive. Amen. That's when you really come alive. Everybody with me this morning? If you want to really know God, you must dine on His Word. Every day, you must hear God's Word. And you must have it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And midnight snack. And I don't know about you, when I wake up in the middle of the night, I always keep water next to me at least. Sometimes I get hungry in the middle of the night. You know, so 
have a little munchie. I'm telling you, we need to feed on the Word of God constantly and let it come into your soul in so many different ways. You must yearn for God's Word. Say, yearn for God's Word. Pastor, I thought you said you're almost done. I did. But that's not the truth, and you know it. Amen. I'm almost done. I'm only kidding you. Say you must saturate your spirit, soul, and body with the Word of God every day. It's not about volume or how much you read either. It's about quality. Amen. It's about having the Holy Spirit illumine His words into your heart. It's better to get one chapter deeply into your heart, bringing it with revelation and changed by the Holy Spirit, than it is to read five, six, ten chapters and not get anything out of it. Amen? It's not about volume. And if you're already in the habit of feeding yourself with God's Word daily, I encourage you to ramp it up today. Ask the Lord to help you to love His Word more. Ask Him to help you to cherish it. Re-examine your Bible reading strategy. Amen. Are you making progress and gaining revelation? Are you getting new revelation all the time? You should be. You should be getting new revelation in the Word of God all the time. All the time. Like I read something, I never saw that before. Now I'm getting new revelation. I like to use word revelation. Jesus reveals Himself to His own. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Try new techniques to get the word in your heart. If you like to journal, journal. Some people love to journal. I've never done that. I'm not a journal person, but a lot of people are. That's a good way if you haven't already started. How about learning the names of God? I did that many years ago. I was inspired to understand all the names of God in the Bible. And all of a sudden you get this multifaceted view of the Almighty Father God. All of a sudden you see Him so different and so much bigger when you understand what His names mean. Amen? What is Jehovah Shalom? What is Jehovah M. Kadesh? I mean, learn the names of God in the Bible. I can teach you them. We'll be glad to do that. That will broaden your perspective and you get to into the Word of God even more. Bible memorization is a good thing. Did you know that Charles Stanley, even in his old age, he said he never stopped. He memorizes a scripture every day. And he's been preaching for what, nearly 50 years? And he still memorizes Scripture every day. Word studies are always awesome. That's what we do on Thursday nights, guys. We just look into the Word of God. If you have the time. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Maybe that was my flesh coming out. I get frustrated when I see no one hungry for the Word of God. It's so precious. It's so precious. Word studies are always awesome. Topical studies. Where you read through the book of the Bible and highlight certain things. Your Bible should look like Technicolor. With all kind of you know, highlights in it, notes and all that. That's a beautiful thing. You can get so much out of it when you make notes. And I, I would highly recommend that. Well, I told you I was almost through. And I am. I love you guys. That's why I preached this this morning. I really love you guys. I I want you to experience just a little bit of what I've experienced, Carol and I. And we got so much more to go. I want to be a better pastor, guys. I want to be a better pop-up. I want my grandsons and my granddaughters to... Oh, well, I can't wait to be around Papa. I want to be a better dad to my adult children. Complex God, complex job, guys, right? Amen? Anybody with me on that? Being parents of adult children is really complex. But I want to do it better. I want to be a better preacher of the Word. Have any of you arrived where you don't need to improve on anything? No. I'd like to shake your hand. Amen? You all with me? Amen. My friend, no matter where you are today in your relationship with God and His Word, you can get more fired up. Say, I can get more fired up. So I encourage you to ask the Lord to show you how to do that. I've given you seven ways 
on how to stoke your spiritual fire in your life today. Amen. God, overflow. Come on, this is your heart cry. Permeate all my soul. Amen. Amen. Love of God. Amen. Overflow. Hallelujah. Permeate all my soul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Overflow, Almighty God. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, raise your hands to the Lord. You can receive a fresh touch from Him this morning. Because all you have to do is ask. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He will never deny you the Holy Spirit when you ask for it. Hallelujah. Fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God, yes, Lord. He will never deny you the Holy Spirit. Never. Never. Hallelujah. No one can possibly ask for the Holy Spirit and be denied. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. 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 Mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 My God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 This is your opportunity. The body has gathered together. We're all lifting up our faith and our voice to the Lord concurrently. Seeking Him with all of our heart. Asking for a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. Don't leave here without it today. Don't leave here without it. Don't leave here without a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 